Number 17, swallowed by a python. In a tragic incident on the island of Sulawesi, Indonesia, a missing 25-year-old man named Akbar was discovered dead inside a reticulated python that measured 23 feet long. Akbar had gone missing in March of 2017 while harvesting palm oil, prompting a search by local police. And villagers reported suspicions when they found an unmoving python near the family's palm plantation. The snake was then cut open, revealing Akbar's clothed body. Reticulated pythons, which are among the world's longest reptiles, are known to suffocate their prey before swallowing them whole. While such snakes rarely target humans, there have been sporadic reports of them swallowing young children or animals. Akbar's disappearance was initially noted by villagers who reported it to the police, leading to the discovery of the python near the palm plantation. Video footage captured by the police documented the somber event, showing the snake being cut open with a long knife, ultimately revealing Akbar's lifeless body. The village secretary, Salabiro Janaidi, mentioned that cries from the palm grove were heard the night before Akbar's body was found in the snake's stomach. Residents decided to intervene, and that's when they discovered the unfortunate outcome, with Akbar's boots still intact inside the snake's belly. According to Nia Kurniawan from Brawijaya University, a python of this size typically hunts for large prey such as boars or wild dogs. While these snakes generally avoid human settlements, palm oil plantations can attract potential prey like boars, primates or dogs, making them an unintended hunting ground. This incident is a rare and tragic example of human-wildlife conflict, a reminder of the importance of understanding and mitigating such interactions to ensure the safety of both humans and wildlife. Number 16. South African Safari Park In June 2021, a horrific incident occurred at Lion Park, a wildlife sanctuary that's situated between Johannesburg and Pretoria in South Africa. A 29-year-old American woman, identified as Catherine Chappell, lost her life in a lion attack while riding in the passenger seat of an SUV. The lion leaped through an open window and mauled her, despite the park's policy against fully lowering car windows. The driver, a tour guide, was injured while attempting to rescue her. Scott Simpson, assistant operations manager at Lion Park, highlighted the violation of safety protocols, stating, they had their windows all the way down, which is strictly against policy. And he followed that up with, the lion bit the lady through the window. Despite efforts by park staff to chase the lion away, Chapel succumbed to her injuries during emergency treatment. And confirming the tragic incident, a U.S. State Department spokesperson revealed that a U.S. citizen was killed at Lion Park on June the 1st, expressing condolences and providing necessary assistance to the family while respecting their privacy. Lion Park gained attention in a November 60 Minutes story which shed light on the controversial practice of allowing tourists to pet lion cubs. The report alleged that once these lions mature, they're sold for canned hunts where individuals pay to shoot lions in enclosed areas, deeming them too dangerous to be around tourists. The incident with Catherine Chapel underscores the potential risks associated with such interactions and raises questions about the safety measures in place at wildlife parks engaging in cub petting practices. Number 15. Mauled by Wolf Dogs In July 2006, something horrible happened in Pittsburgh when the lifeless and partially consumed body of Sandra Payavazan, a 50-year-old woman, was discovered in the enclosure where she housed a pack of nine hybrid wolf dogs. The grim discovery was made by Payavazan's estranged husband after she failed to attend a scheduled morning appointment. Payavazan maintained the pack of animals within a 40-foot by 150-foot enclosure in her backyard. According to neighbors, she fed them roadkill or whatever scraps she could find. But concerns eventually arose about the pack's potential aggression due to its size, prompting speculation about whether Payavazan fell victim to a medical issue or was attacked by the hybrid wolf dogs. An autopsy was scheduled to determine the cause of Payavazan's death. Elaine Gower, a humane officer with Action for Animals and the Westmoreland County Humane Society, emphasized the challenges associated with keeping a pack of that size. She also noted that such animals would typically require 50 to 100 square miles to roam freely. 
Despite Payavazan being described as a likeable person, Gower expressed that she was delusional about the danger posed by the hybrid wolf dogs, describing her perspective as misguided. The unfortunate incident shed light on the potential risks associated with maintaining exotic animals, particularly in densely populated areas. According to the report, to address the situation, all nine hybrid wolf dogs were euthanized within the enclosure. It's an unfortunate end to a dangerous situation, one that could have been avoided altogether had Paivazan allowed the animals to be wild like they were intended to be. Number 14. Humphrey the Hippo in 2011 in South Africa, Marius Ells, a 40-year-old army major and farmer, was killed by his one-ton pet hippopotamus named Humphrey. Despite repeated warnings about the untamable nature of the wild animal, Ells attempted to domesticate the hippo on his 400-acre farm in the Free State province. The man's body was found covered in bites, submerged in a nearby river. Ells had acquired Humphrey at the age of five months after the hippo had been rescued from a flood and it was the same river where Els was found that the hippo was rescued as a baby. Over the years, the hippo grew too large for its initial adopters and became a pet on Els' farm, where it learned to swim alongside humans. Earlier that year, Els was photographed riding on Humphrey's back, emphasizing the close bond that he felt with the animal, describing Humphrey as like a son to him. Despite Els' claims of a special relationship with the hippo, though, his wife Louise expressed concerns, and Humphrey had previously exhibited aggressive behavior. Reports revealed an incident where a man and his grandson were chased by Humphrey while canoeing on the farmed river, leading them to take refuge in a tree for two hours. Els managed to lure the hippo away with an apple, allowing their rescue by paramedics. Humphrey had also been implicated in the killing of calves belonging to Els' business partner and had a history of escaping its enclosure, occasionally chasing golfers at a local golf club. But despite these incidents, Els considered the hippo lovable and a gentle giant. The tragic outcome highlighted the inherent danger of attempting to domesticate wild animals, especially hippos, which are known for their aggression. Hippos are recognized as one of Africa's most dangerous animals, responsible for more human fatalities each year than lions, elephants, leopards, buffalo, and rhinos combined, given their substantial size and surprising agility, with speeds reaching up to 30 miles per hour. Number 13. Chimp Goes Bananas In Northeast Oregon in 2021, a sheriff's deputy was forced to shoot and kill a pet chimpanzee named Buck at the owner's request after the animal attacked the owner's 50-year-old daughter, causing significant injuries. Buck, a male adult chimp weighing between 200 and 250 pounds, had been part of the family for 17 years in Pendleton. Following the attack, Tamara Brogoiti, the owner, and her injured daughter sought refuge in the basement. Brogoiti, unable to access her own firearms, called 911, expressing the urgent need for deputies to intervene. She requested a headshot to euthanize the animal, emphasizing the danger it posed. Deputies arrived, and following Brogoiti's instructions, they shot Buck in the head, ending the threat. The injured daughter was subsequently treated for multiple bites to her torso, arms, and legs. Buck's presence in the community was well known, and he would accompany Brigoiti on errands when he was younger. Despite the tragedy, though, Brigoiti declined to discuss the incident, stating that it was a painful time for her. Peter, the People for Ethical Treatment of Animals, criticized Brigoiti for keeping Buck as a pet, claiming that the highly social animal was deprived of companionship with other chimpanzees. Peter had also previously warned authorities about the potential risks associated with Brigoiti's interaction with Buck. Chimpanzees were made illegal as pets in Oregon in 2010, but animals like Buck, grandfathered in with pre-2010 permits, were allowed to remain with their owners. While legal, Peter cited the 2009 chimpanzee attack in Connecticut as evidence that keeping primates as household pets poses inherent dangers. Number 12. Legion of Creepy Crawlies In 2004, German police officers experienced a nightmare-inducing scene resembling a horror movie when they entered the apartment of Mark Vogel, who'd been found dead. Vogel, described as a recluse, lived in a tiny apartment in Dortmund with over 200 spiders and lizards. 
The police spokesman likened the apartment to a cross between botanical gardens and the butterfly breeding ground from the silence of the lambs. Upon discovering Vogel's body, officers were met with a gruesome sight. Giant webs draped over him, spiders crawling out of his nose and mouth, and larger pieces of flesh torn off by lizards, which were then taken back to the webs of tarantulas and other bird-eating spiders. For even the most experienced of officers, this discovery must have been hard to handle. Vogel's demise resulted from a black widow spider bite, one of his favorite pets. The venom from this bite was exceptionally potent, being roughly 15 times stronger than that of a rattlesnake and more lethal than cobra and coral snake venom. In addition to the spiders, Vogel housed a boa constrictor, various other snakes, poisonous South American frogs, and a gecko named Helmut. The reclusive Vogel, who never invited anyone to his apartment, was believed to have been dead for one to two weeks before his body was discovered. During this time, some cages and terrariums were left open, allowing the exotic pets to roam freely and feed on his remains. A tarantula even constructed a nest on the ceiling, reaching dimensions similar to that of a small bird's. The apartment, described as bathed in a weird green light, wasn't only home to spiders, snakes, and lizards, but also several thousand termites that added to the eerie atmosphere. The discovery painted a disturbing picture of an isolated and unconventional living situation, emphasizing the risks associated with keeping exotic pets in close quarters. Number 11. Hogs. In 2012 in Coquille, Oregon, the mysterious death of 69-year-old farmer Terry Vance Garner raised questions as U.S. authorities investigated the possibility that his pigs might have played a role in his demise. Garner went out to feed his 700-pound pigs on his farm near Oregon's Pacific coast but never returned. Several hours later, a family member found Garner's dentures and part of his body in the pig enclosure. Coast County District Attorney Paul Frazier considered different scenarios, including the possibility of a medical emergency such as a heart attack. However, he also acknowledged the unsettling prospect that the pigs might have deliberately knocked Garner over before attacking and consuming him. The investigation included examining the history of one pig which had previously bitten Garner. Foul play by a human wasn't ruled out, but limited remains hindered a conclusive cause of death, prompting further examination by a forensic anthropologist apologist at the University of Oregon. Frazier expressed the need to explore all possibilities, describing the situation as doggone weird. Garner's 75-year-old brother Michael described Terry as a good-hearted guy. He also said that animals were a significant part of life for his brother. Michael recounted an incident where a large sow had bitten Terry after he accidentally stepped on a piglet. But despite initial intentions to kill the sow, Terry changed his mind. John Killifer, head of the Animal and Rangeland Sciences Department at Oregon State University, noted that domestic pigs, unlike feral ones, aren't typically aggressive. However, he emphasized that some degree of danger is associated with any animal. In the US, most pigs are raised until they reach a market weight of 250 to 300 pounds, with breeding female pigs rarely exceeding 400 pounds. But Ghana's unusually large sows and a boar named Teddy weighed 700 pounds, surpassing the average size of US pigs. Number 10. Rare Donkey Attack In August 2012, Hollywood Park Mayor William Bill Bulk was found dead on his Atascosa County ranch in South Texas, approximately 150 feet from his truck. At least 10 hours earlier, a stud donkey on the ranch had apparently attacked him, leading to a fatal injury. Atascosa County Chief Deputy David Soward highlighted the potential aggressiveness of donkeys, noting that they can become mean, with aggression sometimes triggered by a female in heat. But the specific trigger for the attack on Bulk remained unclear. The evidence at the scene strongly suggested the involvement of the particular donkey we mentioned earlier, and while the exact nature of the attack, whether he was kicked or trampled, couldn't be definitively determined, it was surmised based on the available evidence. Bulk was discovered with his truck door open and the engine running. The timeline of the incident was estimated between 11 a.m. and noon on the day of discovery. The donkey, weighing about 500 pounds, remained on the property, and decisions regarding its fate were left to the family. 
A statement from Bulk's family on the Hollywood Park City website conveyed the tragic news, emphasizing Bill's love for serving the community and expressing a wish for him to continue doing so. The mayor, elected in May for the first time in public office, not only served in local government but also managed a ranch where he raised cattle and horses. The Hollywood Park City Council scheduled a meeting on September 8th to discuss the appointment of a replacement for Mayor Bulk. But until then, Mayor Pro Tem Steve Phillips assumed the role of acting mayor. Bulk, a retired Air Force veteran with a distinguished military career, served as a B-52 instructor pilot, squadron commander, and had combat experience in the Vietnam War. After retiring in 1990, he operated Tara Sanderosa Beef Masters for two decades and also held a position of vice president at a local credit union before entering municipal politics. Survived by his wife Tonya, as well as his two sons, and his daughter, Bulk's unexpected death marked the loss of a dedicated public servant with a remarkable military background and a passion for ranching. Number 9. Terror Bird In 2019 in Florida, a horrific incident occurred involving a cassowary, a large flightless bird that's native to Australia and Papua New Guinea, resulting in the death of its owner. The cassowary attacked the man after he fell on his property near Gainesville in the northern part of the state. The Alachua County Fire Rescue Department reported the incident, highlighting the likelihood that the cassowary used its long claws in the attack. The victim, who remains unnamed, was apparently breeding the birds, according to state wildlife officials. The deputy chief, Jeff Taylor, characterized the attack as accidental, explaining that the man was in close proximity to the bird and fell. The cassowary then attacked the fallen individual, but the exact fate of the bird following the incident is unclear. Cassowaries, which are similar to emus, can reach heights of up to 6 feet and weigh as much as 130 pounds. They possess distinctive features like their black body feathers and their bright blue heads and necks. Renowned for their potential danger, the San Diego Zoo's website describes cassowaries as the world's most dangerous bird, emphasizing their four-inch dagger-like claws on each foot. The website further explains that cassowaries can swiftly slice open any predator or threat with a single kick, aided by their powerful legs that enable them to run at speeds of up to 31 miles per hour through dense forest underbrush. While cassowaries aren't typically raised for food in the US, they are sought after by collectors, contributing to their presence in private ownership. Number 8. Bad News Bear in October 2009 in Allentown, Pennsylvania, Kellyanne Walls tragically lost her life when she was attacked by a captive 350-pound black bear while cleaning its cage. The incident revealed that her husband, Michael Walls, an exotic pet dealer, was operating with an expired license. Kellyanne, who was 37 years old at the time of the attack, was pronounced dead at the scene. Michael Wall's license to keep and sell exotic animals had expired in June 2008, which officials deemed a technicality. Despite having been licensed since 1994, the lapse raised concerns about the operation of the exotic pet facility. In 2007, Walls reported to authorities that he housed a lion, cougar, jaguar, tiger, black bear, leopard, and two servals on the property in Ross Township, which is located about 20 miles northeast of Allentown in the Poconos Mountains, a rural area. The tragic attack unfolded when Kellyanne entered the bear's 15 by 15 foot steel and concrete enclosure at around 5 p.m. on a Sunday. She threw a shovel full of dog food to one side to distract the bear while she cleaned the other side. However, at some point, the bear turned on her and attacked. The attack was witnessed by her children and the neighbor's children who promptly sought help. The neighbor then intervened by shooting and killing the bear while it was on top of Kellyanne. Tim Conway, an information and education supervisor with the Pennsylvania Game Commission, emphasized the fatal mistake of entering the same area as the bear, given the inherently wild and untamed nature of such animals. Typically, owners of wild animals use a two-section cage system, enabling them to isolate the animal behind a locked gate while cleaning the other part. Number 7. The Jaws of Death In August 2018 on Hilton Head Island in South Carolina, 45-year-old Cassandra Klein was killed by an alligator while walking her dog in sea pines. Klein lost her life attempting to save her dog from the 8-foot alligator 
which was later caught and euthanized. Law enforcement responded to the incident on Wood Duck Road in Sea Pines Plantation at around 9.30 a.m. Witnesses reported seeing the alligator attacking Klein in a lagoon, where she was dragged into the water and pulled under by the aggressive reptile. Fortunately, though, her dog was left unharmed. Blake Smith, a resident in the area, expressed the shock of the community, mentioning that this was the first reported instance of an aggressive alligator interacting with a human in the five years he'd lived there. Sea Pines is a residential area with a significant population of bikers and dog walkers. Steve Darmody, another resident, emphasized the close-knit nature of the community. He recounted receiving Klein's dog from a neighbor after the incident, observing that the dog seemed unharmed. Darmody joined neighbors in reaching out to Klein's family while witnessing the removal of her body from the lagoon. The Sea Pines Community Services Association promptly informed homeowners of the tragic discovery, expressing condolences to the loved ones of the victim. Hilton Head Island Fire Rescue assisted in the response alongside law enforcement and the coroner. Alligator attacks are extremely rare, and the South Carolina Department of Natural Resources made the importance of not feeding alligators known to the public. SCDNR spokesperson David Lucas explained that feeding alligators can make them dangerous by associating humans with food, urging people to be cautious in alligator-friendly habitats and avoid throwing objects at them. In the rare event of an alligator approaching, Lucas advised walking backward and away from the animal. Number 6. Carnivore Cats In July 2023, police in Argentina made a disturbing discovery when they found a partially eaten body of a 59-year-old man, Marcelo Bonifacio, in his home in La Plata, a city near Buenos Aires. Bonifacio, who lived alone and had serious heart problems, had passed away in June, but his death went unnoticed for several days. Concerned neighbors, realizing that they hadn't seen Bonifacio for over two weeks, decided to check on him. Upon approaching his home, they detected a foul odor and promptly called emergency services. Local police arrived shortly thereafter, and upon breaking into the locked house were met with a gruesome sight. Bonifacio's body was in an advanced state of decay, and investigators determined that his cats had eaten part of his legs and an arm. The cats had been confined to the property for several days without access to the outside. The man likely died approximately 20 days before the discovery, and while the exact cause of death isn't clear, officials suspect it may be related to natural causes stemming from his health problems. An autopsy was planned to ascertain the precise cause of death, but the findings have yet to be released to the public. This incident echoes previous reports of individuals being partially eaten by their cats. In Russia, a woman identified as a cat breeder was found dead at her home in 2022, partially consumed by her 20 cats. Authorities believed that she'd been deceased for two weeks before the discovery. And in 2021, a similar case occurred in Madrid, Spain, where an elderly woman was found dead in her apartment after neighbors reported her absence and a foul smell. Her decomposing body had also been partially eaten by her pet cats. These incidents highlight the importance of regular check-ins with individuals living alone, especially those with health concerns, as delayed discoveries can lead to distressing situations involving pets and the deceased. Number 5. Snake Expert's Death In August 2017, Daniel Brandon, a 31-year-old snake enthusiast, was found dead from asphyxiation at his home near Basingstoke, Hampshire. A coroner determined that his death was a result of contact with his 8-foot pet African rock python named Tiny. However, Chris Newman, chairman of the Federation of British Herpetologists, expressed skepticism about the ruling, questioning how the snake, due to its size, could be responsible. Brandon had kept snakes for 16 years, and Tiny was one of 10 snakes in his room. The inquest at North Hampshire Coroner's Court revealed that Brandon was found unconscious in his bedroom with the python coiled under a nearby cabinet. Coroner Andrew Bradley concluded that the cause of death was misadventure. This means that the death resulted from an accidental outcome of a deliberate action where the person took a risk without intending to cause their own demise. Newman cautioned against using the case to raise safety concerns about keeping snakes, emphasizing that any animal has the potential to be dangerous. 
He noted that while there are approximately 10,000 constrictors in the UK, this incident marked the first death or serious injury related to snake keeping in the last century. Pythons typically kill by constricting their prey, but rarely pose a threat to humans. Another snake expert, Geraint Hopkins, considered the incident a tragic accident and argued against keeping such animals as pets. He argued that pythons are wild reptiles and unpredictable, asserting that there's no such thing as a pet snake. Hopkins also highlighted the strength of rock pythons, stating that they're not affectionate and will tighten up if they feel unsafe. He recommended that two people should always be present when handling a python, as it might need assistance to be unwrapped. The Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, while not directly involved in the case, encourages potential exotic pet owners to follow guidelines, acknowledging the challenging environmental, dietary and behavioural needs of these species. The African rock python in this case didn't require a license under the Dangerous Wild Animals Act. Number 4. Primate Party Gone Wrong In 2005, St. James and LaDonna Davis, known for raising a chimpanzee named Mo as their son, experienced a harrowing and tragic incident on what was meant to be a celebratory occasion, Mo's 39th birthday. The couple, visiting Mo at an animal sanctuary in Havala, California, found themselves in a life-threatening situation when they were attacked by two other chimpanzees, resulting in severe injuries. The assailants, two male chimps named Buddy and Ollie, brutally mauled the Davises at the Animal Haven Ranch, a private sanctuary owned by Ralph and Virginia Brower. St. James Davis, who was 62 at the time, bore the brunt of the attack, suffering devastating injuries that included the loss of fingers, an eye, part of his nose, cheek and lips. And in addition, his foot and buttocks were mutilated. LaDonna Davis, who was 64, also sustained injuries, losing a thumb during the assault. The attack, characterized by its ferocity, left paramedics astonished at the extent of the injuries. St. James Davis remained in critical condition at Loma Linda University Medical Center, with significant disfigurement raising doubts about his recovery. LaDonna, having been released from Kern Medical Center, spoke about the traumatic incident with reporters outside her home. Mo, the chimpanzee at the center of the Davis family's unique bond, was reportedly in his cage during the attack, avoiding involvement. The son-in-law of the sanctuary owners, Mark Carruthers, intervened decisively by shooting and killing the two attacking chimps, ending the assault. The use of lethal force was deemed necessary to save the lives of the Davises. Questions arose about how the chimpanzees managed to escape their outdoor cages at Animal Haven Ranch, leading to the violent confrontation. The Browers, who'd been caring for six chimps and one spider monkey, were reportedly shaken by the incident. Virginia Brower discovered the escaped chimps inside her home, leading to the gruesome attack on the Davises. Moe's history with the Davises dates back to the 1960s, when St. James Davis claimed to have rescued him in Tanzania after poachers killed Moe's mother. Over the years, Moe became a part of the family, participating in television and film appearances. However, due to aggressive incidents, Moe had been relocated to sanctuaries, prompting legal battles and emotional reunions. The attack on the Davises ignited discussions about chimpanzee behavior, emphasizing their strength and the potential for aggression even in seemingly controlled environments. Animal experts also noted the vicious nature of chimpanzees and their capability to cause harm, particularly when feeling threatened or jealous. While the Davises' unique relationship with Mo had faced criticism in the past, the tragic turn of events shed light on the complexities of keeping wild animals as pets and raised broader questions about the ethical treatment and captivity of such species. Number 3. Feast of the Pigs In Poland in 2019, a 70-year-old pig farmer identified as Mr. Krzysztof went missing on New Year's Eve and was later found to have been eaten by his own pigs. Investigators speculate that he may have suffered a heart attack before becoming the unfortunate victim of his livestock. The unsettling discovery unfolded when a neighbor stumbled upon bones at the property near the sound of Lubin in the southwest. Subsequent police intervention revealed that the body had been almost entirely consumed, with only a few skull and bone fragments remaining. Authorities led by Magdalena Serafin, the town's district prosecutor, determined that the grim event occurred between December 31, 2019 and January 8, 2020. 
The victim lived alone on the property, where pigs, including two adults and approximately 12 piglets, roamed freely. A neighbor described these pigs as gigantic. The neighbor explained that the animals ran all over the property and that it wouldn't have been difficult for the pigs to get Mr. Kristoff. The neighbor also expressed that he and his family are afraid of the pigs and refused to go anywhere near them. While an autopsy was scheduled for the following Monday after the discovery to ascertain the cause of death, Seraphin acknowledged the formidable challenge due to the extensive consumption of the body. The animals were set to undergo examination by a veterinarian to potentially uncover additional clues. However, given the circumstances, the exact cause of death may remain elusive. In response to the incident, authorities considered euthanizing the pigs, but it's unclear if that ever happened or not. Number 2. Tigers Kill Owner In 2019, Patty Perry, a wildlife conservationist and founder of Wildlife and Environmental Conservation Incorporated in Moore Park, California, was hospitalized after being mauled by tigers during an event for the park's donors. Perry, who regularly entered the tiger enclosure, was reportedly knocked down by a Bengal tiger, which wrapped its paws around her legs. Another tiger joined in, resulting in lacerations and other injuries to Perry's neck. Luckily, though, attendees at the event assisted in helping her escape. Michael Bradbury, Perry's friend and the sanctuary's lawyer, emphasized that the tigers were playing and that Perry, who raised them from cubs, believed it was evident that they weren't acting aggressively. While Perry remains hospitalized with punctures and lacerations, Bradbury mentioned her intention to return to the tigers once released, expressing her emotional connection to them. This incident, a departure from Perry's usual interactions with the tigers, required an investigation. Bradbury noted that Perry was heartbroken about the incident, citing the emotional bond between Perry and the Tigers, likening it to a parental relationship. The broader context of big cat attacks was highlighted with over 900 reported incidents since 1990, according to Big Cat Rescue, an organization that tracks maulings, escapes, and deaths involving big cats. The Association of Zoos and Aquariums discourages free contact with tigers, recommending it only when hand-rearing abandoned cubs. Tigers, known for their quick and aggressive nature, pose inherent risks. The AZA suggests that keepers interact with tigers in pairs to ensure safety and maintain a barrier between themselves and the animals. Perhaps if someone had been with Perry at the time of the attack, things could have been avoided. And now for number one. But if you want to hear more bizarre and crazy stories, stay tuned after the video for some more content. Number one, an elephant never forgets. In Thailand in 2022, a 20-year-old elephant named Pom Pom attacked and killed its owner, 32-year-old Sukhachai Wang Fed. The incident occurred in the Pang Nga province on a rubber plantation where the elephant had been compelled to carry wood, a practice that was banned in Thailand in 1989 but persists in some regions. The extreme heat, with temperatures reaching 89 degrees Fahrenheit, likely played a role in the elephant's aggressive behavior. Authorities found Wang Fed's body in a pool of blood, and the elephant was still standing nearby. Police suspect that the combination of the scorching temperatures and the strenuous task of hauling wood triggered the elephant's violent response. Asian elephants, commonly used as logging elephants to transport logs and wood, are wild animals with the potential for aggression when subjected to abuse or stress. The incident highlights the psychological and physical toll on elephants forced into unnatural activities. Save the Asian Elephants, a charity working to protect these animals, underscores the risks associated with exploiting elephants for tourism and related activities. Despite nearly 30 laws protecting elephants in Thailand, many still endure suffering in domestic conditions. Around 60% of the country's elephants are captive, with approximately 60% of these being used for tourism or other activities. And the use of tools like bull hooks to control elephants raises concerns about the well-being of these creatures. Elephants, typically known for their gentle nature, can become dangerous when stressed, provoked, or threatened. Human wildlife conflicts in Thailand aren't isolated incidents, as evidenced by a similar attack in the Nakhon Sri Tamarat province in July 2022, where an elephant attacked its owner, possibly due to stress from being forced to climb a hill for work purposes. 19. Pitbull vs. Spaniel 
A cavalier King Charles Spaniel named Buckles had the scare of a lifetime back in 2018 when an unleashed pit bull suddenly attacked him. The five-year-old canine and his owner, Abby, were walking to a park in New York City one day, simply minding their own business. Things took a horrifying turn, though, when they crossed paths with the pit bull, who went in a rage and took things out on Buckles, clamping its powerful jaws down on the smaller dog's throat and legs. Abby also received some scratches from the pit bull while trying to defend her beloved pet. A man eventually came over to help, put a leash on the pit bull, and led the dog away without saying anything at all. In the meantime, Abby was panicking and had to rush Buckles to the vet. He was left with multiple injuries, including a disfigured jaw, and he had a long road to recovery in front of him. Thankfully, Buckles survived the ordeal. He even got his own Instagram page, which documented the harrowing journey and the healing process that followed after, including reconstructive surgery that put wires and tubes in his jaw. After the attack, the NYPD put the word out that they were searching for the pit bull's owner to make them take accountability. It's unclear whether the suspect was ever identified. Even though Buckles was expected to recover physically, his guardians were concerned that he might have a more difficult time overcoming the emotional trauma he was dealt. They told local news station ABC 30 that Buckles was a rescue dog and had a history of abuse. He'd only recently started trusting humans and other animals again before the attack. 18. Suffocated by a giant snake 31-year-old reptile enthusiast Dan Brandon was well known among those in his circle as a responsible snake handler, so it was a shock when his rock python Tiny squeezed him to death back in 2018. The pet owner from the English village of Church Crookham was discovered dead in his bedroom, where he kept 12 tarantulas and 9 snakes as well as Tiny. Brandon's mother testified that she was cooking dinner when she suddenly heard a crash from his bedroom. It was her son falling face first to the floor, and by the time she overheard the noise and realized something was wrong, Brandon was unresponsive. She entered Brandon's room and immediately noticed Tiny was not in her cage. Coroner Andrew Bradley concluded that the eight-foot python was probably wrapping herself around Brandon in an affectionate, not aggressive way. In other words, the snake didn't mean to asphyxiate her owner. During an inquest, Brandon's mother testified to his responsible handling practices. She pointed out that Brandon was well aware of how strong Tiny was compared to his other snakes, and that he was extra careful when handling her. But the grieving mother also said that Tiny sometimes seemed aggressive toward her son, and that the reptile had a habit of hissing and pretending to strike at Brandon, which he never took seriously. But in hindsight, it was enough to make his family wonder if maybe Tiny's aggressive side wasn't as playful as it initially seemed. Not everyone agreed that Tiny killed Brandon. Veterinarian and expert snake keeper John Cooper testified during the inquest that he was impressed with the conditions Brandon kept his snakes in, so much so that he found it hard to believe Brandon wouldn't have known how to free himself from a python. In Cooper's opinion, it was clear Brandon knew a lot about snakes. It just didn't make sense that he'd be an expert on how to take care of them, but not know how to defend himself against one. But Cooper failed to offer a viable alternative explanation for what might have happened, and the general consensus seems to be that Tiny did asphyxiate her owner, accident or not. 17. Dog Gnaws Owner's Nose in 2020, what started off as a normal morning for a Connecticut woman named Rebecca Olker ended in sheer terror. She was left forever changed. The 24-year-old's boyfriend was at work when she went to take her blue healer dogs Maverick and Apollo outside to the bathroom. Rebecca instantly noticed that Maverick was acting strange. He wasn't obeying her like usual, and when she grabbed his collar to make him sit, he ground at her before leaping into an attack on her arms and hands. The unexplained aggression continued as Maverick knocked his owner down to the ground and proceeded to maul her face. He almost ripped off her upper lip and a large portion of her nose, leaving both dangling from her face. Rebecca later said that she thought she was going to die while the dog repeatedly attacked her. She called her partner, Stuart, and somehow managed to escape into an upstairs bathroom. 
When emergency responders got to the scene, they rushed the young woman to the hospital, where she received over 100 stitches on her face. In addition to her facial injuries, she suffered severe nerve damage to her hands, and while she lost some feeling in both her nose and upper lip, she was lucky enough to have a surgeon who did a fantastic job reattaching them. Maverick was put down not long after the attack, and the cause of his unusual behavior remains unclear to this day. 16. Deadly Deer Domestication In November 2010, concerned relatives discovered 67-year-old Benjamin Gerald Rushton dead in a kennel right outside his Harrison County, Texas home. It seemed like he had been trampled on and attacked by a 500-pound European red stag deer that he was raising in his backyard, even though it's illegal in Texas to keep the animal as a pet, especially during its mating season. As you probably guessed, it just so happened to be that special season when the deer attacked its owner. More specifically, it was the rutting period, when bucks experience heightened hormone levels, which often leads to increased aggression. Sheriff's deputies said that Rushton was feeding his deer when it suddenly became aggressive and attacked him. It was the first fatal attack of its kind in the area, according to local game wardens, who responded to the scene and fatally shot the stag to get to the victim's body. They told the media that they didn't know why Rushton was even keeping the animal in captivity. The senior citizen had multiple other wild creatures in cages on its property. It seemed that he was trying to domesticate them. Authorities found multiple deer species, including Axis deer. They treated the bizarre tragedy as an opportunity to remind the public of the dangers of trying to keep wild animals as pets. Rushton's death came just three years after a 66-year-old exotic animal owner named John Henry Fricks was killed by a red deer in Cherokee County, Georgia. Fricks entered the deer's enclosure to feed it when the animal charged at him, piercing his chest with its antlers. Much like Rushton, it was believed that the deer was in rut when it killed Fricks. Family members told investigators that the deer had recently been acting strangely aggressive, which suggests that it was also hormonal when it attacked its owner. 15. Indiana Man Trampled by Wildebeest 64-year-old Klaus Dick Redant kept an array of exotic pets outside his house in North Liberty, Indiana. Around 10 o'clock a.m. one morning back in 2004, he went out to his barnyard to tend to his animals. When he failed to come back inside for lunch a few hours later, his wife Terrilyn grew concerned. She went looking for her husband and saw him lying on the ground, motionless. Dick was pronounced dead at the scene not long after, despite emergency responders' best efforts to revive him. The coroner concluded that he'd been attacked by one of his three pet wildebeests, also called Nu. A wildebeest is a type of antelope native to Africa. In the wild, males can grow massive curved horns, but Dick kept his wildebeest horns cut down to small nubs, likely for safety reasons. Unfortunately, the tragedy proved that even without horns, a wildebeest has the power to easily take out a human if it wants to. According to the coroner, Dick's pet rammed him multiple times, knocking him to the ground, and then proceeded to trample on him. His cause of death was listed as blunt force trauma. St. Joseph County Police Corporal Stephen Shively said that Dick was killed right at the beginning of mating season, a time when male wildebeests become particularly aggressive. He speculated that the animal may have considered its owner a threat to its chances with a nearby female. Some states are stricter than others when it comes to owning exotic pets. At least 20 states have bans, meaning it's flat-out illegal to have most exotic pets, while other states require strict permits. Indiana, where Dick Radden lived, is one of a handful of states that have practically no restrictions, making it extremely easy to own many animals that are considered dangerous. But as this unfortunate tragedy shows, even when it is allowed, it's usually still not a good idea. 14. Temperamental Bull Takes Deadly Action It wasn't exactly a secret that 52-year-old Ricky Weinhold's pet bull was dangerous. The property owners in Wernersville, Pennsylvania, where he kept the animal, even told him he needed to get rid of it. They could tell the bull had a bad disposition and believed it was responsible for an attack that happened in 2009 that left Weinhold with multiple broken ribs. 
but he never took the advice, and in March 2010, just one day before his 53rd birthday, the farm owner's son discovered Weinhold dead in an outdoor pen. According to Lancaster Online, his injuries were consistent with having been inflicted by the hooves and the head of a bull. Berks County Deputy Coroner Terry L. Stracker told the news outlet that Weinhold treated 10 cattle he kept at the farm like his pets. He visited them daily and spent extra time with the property shortly before his death because one of the cattle was pregnant. While it's unclear what provoked the attack itself, Weinhold's death was ruled as an accident. Nobody likes the thought of giving up a pet they can't handle, but it happens often, and it's best for both the animal and the owner to find a better arrangement. 13. Childhood Ruining Chimpanzee In 2013, the stepdaughter of a French singer named Leo Ferre released an autobiography holding shocking claims that her father's pet chimpanzee ruined her entire childhood. Annie Boutot described how she felt discarded compared to her new sibling after her parents adopted the female primate named Pepe back in 1960. They treated Pepe like another daughter. In fact, the chimp was overly spoiled. She had her very own bedroom, her own toys, and she even sat with the family for meals at the dinner table. Over time, Pepe's behavior became more and more problematic. She stole valuables and clothing from guests, occasionally bid people, and even stole a baby and took it up to the roof of the family's home, according to Butor. But Ferre refused to see Pepe as anything other than his child, and he took deep offense to people calling her a simple animal. He reportedly said that he wasn't taming Pepe, but was raising her. Butor claimed that the family's attendants eventually quit thanks to repeated unpleasant encounters with Ferry's growing menagerie. In addition to Pepe, the eccentric musician adopted a 770-pound pig that often watched TV in the family's living room. At some point, Butor reached a breaking point with Pepe and moved in with her biological father to get away from the dysfunction of the Ferry household. The thrill of having exotic pets wore off for her stepfather as well, and he eventually started spending time away from the house to focus on his career instead. Ferry wasn't home when Pepe fell one day and injured herself, and when she wouldn't let her caretakers come near her, Butor's mother made the executive decision to have the primate put down. The news of Pepe's death was not well received by Ferry who blamed his wife for the loss. A permanent wedge was driven between the couple, and they eventually separated. Ferre wrote the song Pepe in honor of the chimpanzee. In her book, Butor blamed her stepfather for Pepe's death. It was clear from her writing that she wasn't over the fact that she came in second to her non-human sister for most of her childhood. 12. Neglectful owner pays with his life a neighborhood guard on the Indonesian island of Batam knew something was wrong when he noticed some abandoned luggage sitting outside 50-year-old Andre Lumboga's house back in 2011. It had been left there for five days, giving off the distinct impression that something might have happened to Lumboga. As the guard approached the property to see what was going on, he got an overwhelming whiff of a foul odor and decided to leave the investigation to the police. Officers discovered Lumboga's decapitated body in front of his house and his skull somewhere in his kitchen. He arrived home from a two-week vacation on the night he went missing, so he'd most likely been dead for multiple days. Police also noticed the mauled bodies of two dogs on his property. Lumboga's body showed signs of having been mauled to death and eaten by his seven pet dogs, leading investigators to think that he'd failed to give enough food to his pets during his absence. By the time he came back, they were probably starving, and after being malnourished for so long, the dogs were desperately hungry. Based on the evidence of the scene, it seemed as if the seven remaining canines killed and ate the two dogs that were dead. And while it's hard to imagine what kind of person would go away for two weeks without feeding their dogs, it unfortunately happens more than you'd think. For Lumboga, he paid for the mistake with his life. 11. Black Bear Turns on Caretaker Exotic animal owner Sam Mazzola was already facing legal problems when a hired caretaker, 24-year-old Brent Kandra, 
was killed by a pet bear on his property in Columbia Station, Ohio back in 2010. Kandra let the bear out of its cage for feeding when the sudden attack took place. In an attempt to save the caretaker's life, Mazzola tried to get the bear to go back into its cage using a fire extinguisher, but the damage was already done. Kandra was airlifted to the hospital where he later died from his injuries, and the bear was ultimately euthanized. In the wake of the tragedy, Mazzola refused to go into detail about what happened. At the time, he was under fire by several activists who called him out for inviting people to wrestle bears at an event that previously happened in Cleveland. As a result, he lost his license to exhibit, but authorities allowed him to keep his bears, wolves, tigers, and lions. Mazzola also had prior convictions for illegally transporting and selling exotic creatures. Lorain County Sheriff's Captain James Drozdowski told the Columbus Dispatch that investigators were unsure what triggered the bear's behavior. Kandra was an experienced caretaker who worked for Mazzola for six years leading up to his death. The incident was officially classified as a workplace-related accident. While Mazzola wasn't feeling particularly talkative when questioned by members of the press, his neighbor, 76-year-old retired Cleveland police officer Raymond O'Leary, was more than happy to share. He told the dispatch that it made him and other members of the neighborhood uncomfortable, knowing that Mazzola kept as many as 20 dangerous exotic animals on his property. O'Leary even claimed that a tiger got loose one time. He didn't witness it firsthand, but another neighbor showed him videos of the big cat walking through the streets. In July 2011, less than a year after the attack, Mazzola was found dead inside his house. Authorities declined to release details regarding the nature of his passing, but if we had to speculate, we'd say it was related to his pets. 10. Wolf Dog's More Loving Caretaker 50-year-old Sandra Piovsen was dedicated to the nine hybrid wolf dogs that she had raised from birth. Eight of them were kept in a fenced-in area outside her home in Salem Township, Pennsylvania, while one lived inside Sandra's home with her two Rottweilers. Her loved ones were less enthusiastic about the animals, especially after one of the wolf dogs attacked Sandra's friend a few years prior in 2010. The friend declined to file a complaint, but the incident only heightened existing fears that the half-wild canines would escape their enclosure someday and hurt or kill someone else. Unfortunately, these concerns were completely justified. In May 2012, Sandra was spotted dead inside her wolf dog's cage. She had been viciously mauled. Since nobody saw the attack, the cause will never be known. Eight of the wolf dogs were put down following the fatal mauling. Opinions are divided on whether wolf dogs are more dangerous than domestic canines. Proponents of the pets tend to acknowledge that they require strict training, but claim that attacks on humans are even rarer than some domestic breeds. Those who think it's a bad idea to crossbreed domestic dogs with wolves argue that attacks are more likely because hybrid dogs lack the natural fear of humans wolves have. In other words, while wolves tend to avoid people, wolf dogs don't, but they're still equipped with some of the natural instincts that could cause a wild wolf to become aggressive. 9. Farmer Devoured by Feasting Hawks 69-year-old Terry Vance Garner went outside to feed his animals one morning in 2012 and never came back. His loved ones were faced with a horror scene later that day, when they got worried and went to look for him at his farm in Coos County, Oregon. The missing senior citizen's body parts were scattered throughout a pig pen, making it clear that his hogs had attacked and eaten him. There was no question whether the 700-pound beasts were capable of killing a person. At the same time, the circumstances created a highly unusual situation. Investigators made sure to leave no stone unturned as they worked to piece together what happened to the farmer. Terry's remains were too mangled for the medical examiner to narrow down a particular cause of death. While authorities initially hesitated to rule out foul play, they eventually decided that a crime did not occur. They found it was more likely that he simply fell into the pig pen, possibly as the result of a heart attack or some other medical emergency. It was also possible that the hogs knocked him over on purpose. At least one of the pigs acted aggressively toward Garner in the past, according to his brother Michael, 
who said that a female hawk had bitten Terry's hand before. Terry planned to euthanize the sow after the incident, but later changed his mind. Unfortunately for Terry's family, it was impossible to answer every question about his death. 8. Lion Owner Loses Battle Against Big Cat It doesn't take a genius to understand that it's dangerous to keep big cats as pets, which is why 34-year-old Michael Prasik's neighbors weren't thrilled that he was keeping an African lion and lioness on his property in the Czech town of Chechov. He acquired the male in 2016 and the female a few years later in 2018 and bred them for his business, despite lacking the necessary permits to own them in the first place. In fact, Prasik had been denied permission to build cages for the lions and was fined at least once for illegal breeding practices. But he refused to let government officials onto his land during the ongoing feud, and authorities lacked the resources to forcibly relocate the lions. There was also no evidence of cruelty towards the creatures, giving law enforcement less of a reason to actually intervene. And even though a permit was needed, it wasn't exactly illegal for Prasek to have the beasts. So even though nobody thought it was a good idea for him to have the pets, he still got to keep them. The long-running disagreement came to an end in March 2019, when Prasek's father discovered his son's mutilated body in the male lion's pen. He had been mauled to death, validating his neighbor's fears in the worst possible way. Responding police officers had no choice but to shoot the lions in order to reach Prasik's body. 7. Watch Goat Attacks Elderly Owner In a story so strange it had to be fact-checked by Snopes, a 110-pound goat named Snowball killed its abusive owner in 1991. 71-year-old retired poultry worker Kyle Holsey wanted to turn the docile animal into an aggressive watchdog to keep an eye on his property in Cherokee County, Georgia. In an attempt to turn the goat against humans altogether, he regularly beat it with sticks. As you can imagine, Snowball eventually grew tired of the intense abuse. Carl's wife, Alma Holsey, even warned him that if he continued mistreating the animal, it would eventually kill him. But her words fell on deaf ears, and the day finally came when Snowball turned against his cruel owner. The billy goat knocked Carl down twice as he ran to escape, but Snowflake caught up and charged at him again, knocking him off a porch and onto the ground below. Carl fell about five feet and died right where he landed. The coroner concluded that he succumbed to blunt trauma to the abdominal cavity from being repeatedly hit by Snowflake. In almost every case, a pet who kills their owner is put down. But Snowflake received a massive amount of sympathy from the public, while Carl's death received less attention, sparking a widespread campaign to spare the abused goat. Activists overwhelmed animal control with calls, pleading with officials not to kill Snowflake, while offers to adopt him came flooding in. Some people even threatened authorities, with one call a sec that what happens to Snowflake will happen to you, which isn't okay, but it just goes to show the level of dedication that went into saving this goat's life. The people spoke, and those in charge actually listened. Any and all consideration of euthanasia was taken off the table, and Snowflake was moved to an animal sanctuary in Illinois, where he was free to live out the rest of his life in safety and comfort. Some activists went as far as saying that Holsey's death was well-deserved karma, while others argue that it's never in good taste to be happy about the death of a human. How do you feel? Let us know in the comments below. 6. Monitor Lizards Munch on Owner In what's been described as one of the most terrifying and bizarre instances of a person being eaten by their pets, 42-year-old Ronald Huff's lifeless body was found in 2002 on the floor of his Delaware apartment, surrounded by his seven Nile monitor lizards. The unusual pets were feasting on their owner, and it remains unclear whether the reptiles killed Huff or if they simply fed on his remains after his death. Police discovered the tragedy after being dispatched to Huff's apartment for a welfare check. The exotic pet owner's neighbor, Jeff Wildonga, told the press that he could see that a large portion of Huff's face had been devoured, saying, I could see his molars up where his ears should have been. 
While an autopsy was inconclusive, Huff's former boss Mike Cassidy seemed to believe that it was possible the lizards ate him. Speaking with the US Sun, Cassidy said that Huff had previously shown him a few bite injuries that were caused by the pets, indicating that he had been attacked in the past. Additionally, Cassidy claimed Huff's body was positioned in a way that made it seem as if he was trying to escape his apartment when he died. He also said that a police officer told him Huff might have still been alive when the lizard started eating him. Reaching lengths of up to 8 feet, the Nile monitor lizard is one of Africa's longest lizards. The species typically feeds on prey much smaller than humans though, like rodents, birds, and other mammals. But Nile monitor lizards are not picky. They're generally considered dangerous to keep as a pet thanks to their sharp teeth and venom, which is usually not fatal to humans but can come with some negative side effects. Unfortunately, the role that Huff's lizards may have played in his death will forever remain a mystery. 5. Ming of Harlem Anyone who's lived in New York City will be quick to tell you that most apartments aren't even big enough to house a family comfortably, let alone a 400-pound wildcat. But Anthony Yates didn't let that stop him. The part-time taxi driver was determined to own a tiger, and in 2001, he bought an eight-week-old Siberian Bengal tiger hybrid. He welcomed the cat into his Harlem apartment, where he already had a five-foot-long alligator named Al. A baby tiger hardly seems threatening, but Yates quickly realized how fast big cats grow. It wasn't long before the animal named Ming was eating 20 pounds of meat per day. Yates did his best to keep on with caring for and entertaining an animal he had no professional experience with in a space that was far too small. Over the next few years, neighbors at the housing complex complained to authorities about an overwhelming urine smell coming from the apartment. But the tiger's presence somehow flew under the radar until October 2003, when Yates showed up to an emergency room with a bite wound that he claimed came from a pit bull. Doctors could tell immediately that the injury was caused by an animal with a much larger jaw, so they contacted the NYPD. Officers snuck a tiny camera into the apartment and discovered that the doctors were correct in their suspicions that Yates had been bitten by something he definitely shouldn't have been keeping as a pet. An officer rappelled down the building's exterior and shot Ming with a tranquilizer dart from outside the building. The tiger was removed and relocated to a sanctuary where he spent the rest of his life in a suitable environment. As it turns out, neighbors were aware that Yates kept a lot of pets, including exotic animals. Ming's presence was somewhat of an urban legend, but on some level, people knew something strange was going on inside the apartment, especially since Yates came home from the market with so much meat every day. At one point, he even had a roommate, and he never even warned her about Ming or Al. Caroline Domingo, who rented a room in the apartment with her husband, told the New York Daily News that she was shocked when she saw Ming, but that she eventually got used to the tiger. She said that Yates kept the apartment clean and that he treated Ming like his baby. Yates later pleaded guilty to reckless endangerment and possessing a wild animal. He was sentenced to five years probation and banned from owning animals. During an interview with the New York Times in 2020, he stood by his belief that he wasn't doing anything wrong by owning a pet tiger. He insisted he never endangered the public and that he's an animal lover, not a criminal. Yates even said that he still hoped to someday realize his vision of creating an animal sanctuary. Hopefully, he'll do it somewhere other than his living room. 4. Elk vs. Ranch Hand in 2006, a 1,000-pound, 7-point bull elk attacked a ranch hand in Moffat County, Colorado. Nicknamed Clyde, the 9-year-old elk spent all of his life in captivity at the property, and there had never been any previous issues with his behavior. Employees found the bloody body of 56-year-old John Renner in a feeding trough inside Clyde's pen. Speaking with the Denver Post, Moffat County Sergeant Rick Holford said that based on Renner's injuries, it looked like he was tossed around a lot. Clyde still had blood on his antlers and was acting aggressive when Holford and other deputies got to the scene. While the elk had apparently never acted like this before, this was far from a freak incident. 
Like a few other cases on today's list, it happened during rotting season. Simply put, Clyde's hormone levels were elevated, and he was trying to show his dominance. According to Holford, he was defending his territory. He was a wild animal acting like a wild animal. Ranch owner Lou Wyman, whose experience raising elk dated back to 1968, said that Renner was specifically told not to enter Clyde's enclosure. He'd only been working at the ranch for two weeks when the incident happened. 3. Camel Sits on Caretaker Kathy Ake had a wide array of both common and unusual pets, including a collection of Pomeranians, monkeys, wallabies, and a 1,800-pound camel named Polo. She showcased her strange pets at her 15-acre exotic animal farm in Wewa Hitchka, Florida up until April 2007, when Polo attacked her in front of a local news crew during a visit to the property. The 55-year-old was trying to leave the camel's enclosure when the animal suddenly kicked and sat on her, crushing her to death. Kathy's husband Donnie was at work when the tragedy started to unfold and came home in the middle of it. A reporter called 911, but by the time emergency responders arrived and moved Polo, it was too late to save Kathy. Dalton Upchurch, who was the sheriff at the time, told the Akala Star Banner that he believed there was not much Kathy could have done in the midst of the deadly situation to save herself. Speaking with ABC News in the aftermath of his wife's death, Donnie said that the couple bought Polo at an auction just three weeks earlier. He thought that their new pet was just agitated because it was breeding season. In keeping with Kathy's belief in being kind to animals, Donnie said that he planned to find another home for Polo and not euthanize him. 2. Trampled by an Antelope As the owner of a 60-acre exotic animal park in Varisburg, New York, Hans Boxler Sr. had over 40 different species, including camels, zebras, wildebeests, llamas, emu, bison, and ostriches. The farm also held a large species of Asian antelope called a nilgai, which resembles a strange cross between a cow and an antelope and can weigh over 600 pounds. Boxler was a lifelong animal lover who always approached his pets with respect for their instincts and behaviors. He also prioritized safety when it came to caring for and interacting with his creatures. So when the 81-year-old failed to come home one night in 2016 after heading out to feed his menagerie, his loved ones weren't sure what went wrong. They found the senior citizen's lifeless body the next morning after noticing that a nil guy somehow escaped its enclosure. The antelope was still confined by an outer fence, but by getting out of its pen, it was able to come into direct contact with Boxler. His body was covered in blunt force injuries, making it clear that the nil guy trampled over him. In a statement, a family member described Boxler's death as shocking, considering the amount of caution he used when dealing with his animals. It was the first and only accident to ever happen at the property, and since nobody saw it happen, the antelope's reasons for attacking its owner will forever stay a mystery. 1. Rabid Pets Lash Out It's common knowledge that household pets can contract rabies from wild animals and pass it to owners, but it happens so rarely in the United States that we usually don't even think about it. In November 2022, a pet owner in Brunswick County, North Carolina was attacked by their injured cat. They did the smart thing and took the cat to the vet where it was diagnosed with rabies. The feline was behind on its vaccines, which seems to happen pretty often, despite most states having a requirement for pet owners to keep their animal shots up to date. By acting quickly, the owner was able to avoid getting rabies. While it's possible to prevent the disease after being bitten by an affected animal, a person has to act quickly. Once the disease sets in, there's nothing doctors can do to stop it from getting worse, and it's practically a guaranteed death. Around 90% of reported rabies cases happen in wild animals, with just a few hundred cases of household cats contracting the disease each year in the US. It's even rarer for dogs to get rabies, with just 60 to 70 cases being reported annually nationwide. In 2018, a pet dog grew aggressive and bit his two owners in Houston, Delaware. Its rabies shots were not up to date at the time, and the canine tested positive for rabies. 
Once again, the owners got treatment in time to stop themselves from getting the disease, but the outcome could have been much worse. These rare but life-threatening cases are a grim reminder that it's a good idea to not take any unnecessary chances if your pet suddenly becomes nasty to warn you or isn't acting like themselves. What do you think would be safer to keep as a pet, a chimpanzee or a python? Let us know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.